Hey everybody, it's Adam from The Army Painter back again with another video tutorial. Today we're going to take you a little bit behind the scenes and showcase how we help to develop some characters for a new product range we're calling Game Master. The third member of our adventuring crew is Derek Dalanaya. Fast and agile, Derek can at times seem like a blur in the wind. Extremely agile and acrobatic, he rarely fires an arrow from his longbow with both feet on the ground. We'll begin this three-part painting series with an Adventure Ready tutorial. Now what we like to do with the Adventure Ready tutorial is teach the basics of base coating and washing. So here's the paints that we're going to need for today's video. Now that you've scurried back from finding all of the paints that you need, go ahead and grab yourself some clean rinsing water. I like to use my wet palette. You should give it a try too if you haven't yet. And your favorite brush. And let's get started. As you can see, I primed the model with color primer goblin green. This is going to be a great starting point. It's going to save us loads of time because most of the color on this model is already done. As always, I like to start by blocking in the skin tones first. So I am using rosy skin from the D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Pigment Set to block in Derek's skin tones. The skin actually has pretty good coverage, so in some cases you might only need one coat, but I do recommend just applying two very thin coats. It'll save you loads of time in the long run, and you won't obscure any of the fine detail on your model. I applied my first coat, and you can see that I did base coat the hair. I'm going to apply a second coat of this rosy skin to the model. I base coated the hair because that's just going to save me a little bit of time because I should be able to get one coat coverage with the blonde hair that I plan to add to the model. But before I apply that second coat, I'm taking a bit of lawful white and I'm just gonna apply it to the recesses of the eyes. I don't care too much if I get this outside of the eye sockets here because I am gonna go back and clean that up with my second coat. And this is just to make sure that I get the sockets of the eyes painted white. Once that dries, if you'd like to, you go ahead and add a dot of black or blue. I think we'll do blue here. Any blue will do, but because it's an elf, I think he should have blue eyes. Actually, maybe he should have dark green eyes. Let's give him some green eyes. I have some goblin green handy on my wet palette, and that's one of the beauties of working with the Army Painter color primer system because it is 100% color match to the primer of the same name. So I'm just going to take a bit of that goblin green, and I'm going to just put a little green pupil in our wood elf's eye sockets. With all the skin based in, we're going to move on to painting the hair. And this is going to be a subtle difference, but I am using goblin skin here. And this is a nice yellowish tan tone. It's a slight difference to the rosy skin, but we're going to apply two thin coats once again just to ensure that we get nice even coverage of this goblin skin on Derek's hair. Now it is a very subtle difference between that rosy skin and the goblin skin colors that we used for the hair and the flesh on Derek. But that's okay, it's going to come out a bit more in later stages of this tutorial series. Right now we are going to begin base coating the cape and the pants. So for this I'm using cobalt red. This is a nice dark red, very similar to the color that we find on the artwork that the fantastic John Gallagher produced for this Game Master series. So just very carefully, this is going to take two coats because we wanna use very thin down paints to ensure that we have nice even coverage. We don't wanna obscure any of the details on the model. This is two very thin coats of this cobalt red. I love this cobalt red, it's very versatile color. It's great for, obviously if you're painting cobalts, but I really like it for painting certain types of leather, and it's a great base tone for many reds that you might paint. On the cape is one area where you wanna make sure that you use very thin down paint. So it's gonna take several coats of this. I would recommend at least three, but make sure that you get nice, even coverage across the entirety of the cape. Thinning down that paint on these big, broad, flat surfaces it's going to help prevent from having brush marks and streak marks on the cape when you're finished. So just take your time, go ahead, go about this, let the paint dry and go back and add a second or third coat if necessary.
Now that we based in everything in cobalt skin like the cape and the pants, we're going to move on to working up the base tones on all of the leather areas. Like the boots here, I'm using Minotaur Hide. And again, we're going to probably apply two thin coats of this just to make sure that we don't obscure any of the details. So Minotaur Hide here. And while we've got the Minotaur Hide handy, I'm just going to pick out a couple of the cobblestone pavers that I want to be, you know, a brownish tone. So just go ahead and apply that to the pavers that you want. Just be very random with this. We just want to add some variety to the pavers. I'll use this color to also paint in some of the other details on the model, like his little dagger holster here. And of course, I'm going to paint his bow. You'll notice that I went ahead and went back to some cobalt red to paint in the belt on Derek, and I applied our Minotaur hide to all the areas of the bow, and of course, his mask. Now, I did in this base coating stage, I went outside the lines a little bit, oopsie there, but one of the beauties of working with our color primer system is that we have a 100% matching war paint. So I'm gonna take this time to just go ahead and tidy up those areas. See, I only sprayed this with our primer first, and you can see just by using our War Paints Goblin Green, which is a 100% color match, we just clean it up nice and tidy with one simple light application. So go ahead, if at this point on your model, whatever model you're painting, if you started off with one of our color primers, this is a great opportunity to go back and just tidy up any of your mistakes. Now that we've painted in all of the green areas and just cleaned it up a bit, I'm gonna go to Skeleton Bone to paint all of the bony areas on the model. I'm gonna start by just applying this, just like I did with the Minotaur Hide, to just a couple of the pavers on the base. Again, we just wanna be somewhat random here. I wanna find just a few areas, just to add some differentiation to the colors and tonality on the base before we base the rest of it in, like we did to match the other characters from the Game Master range. I'm also gonna use this paint to base in any of the cloth or the ropes, like this piece of cloth here, and any of the cloth on the bow, like here, just very carefully. Now I'm using very thin down paint, and if you feel like you need to go back and add a second coat, just go ahead, just wait for that first coat to dry. This will ensure that you don't obscure any of the fine details on whatever model that you're painting. It's been a really fun process developing these characters to help tell the Game Master story. It's seen a lot of hands and a lot of eyes at the Army Painter headquarters. We even hired famous illustrator and graphic designer John Gallagher to do the artwork for our elf ranger friend. And I couldn't be painting this model without his artwork, so let's take a listen to what John had to say about Derek. I think one of the most interesting things about uh, the Dungeons and Dragons pastiche and the, the high fantasy pastiche is the opportunity to uh, not only work on, you know, I realize it's a humanocentric uh, universe, but the opportunity to work with some of the demi-human races. Uh, there's always, you know, really kind of marvelous and wide open uh, opportunity to design these characters. But again, as I mentioned in, in, my, in my preamble, that the interesting thing about things like, for example, elves, which uh, Dayrick is a, a wood elf ranger. Uh, firstly, I'll, I'll talk about elves, is that they, they have a, you know, a fascinating place, obviously, in the in the lodestone of high fantasy. And there's still, I think, you know, uh, there's an understanding, again, getting that silhouette from a distance is everything. And, you know, they're seen often as well, a bit arrogant, a bit aloof, a bit detached, and all that goes with that. When you compound elves with, with uh, the, the ranger class, because rangers by themselves are usually by pure grit, determination, will, ingenuity, and uh, anything they can throw on their backs. You have to have them come together in, a, in an interesting way. Plus, he's an archer, so having a having bow and and arrows is always uh, visually an interesting uh, thing to have as well. Now 
Now, before I begin to paint in any of the metallics, I'm gonna do one final application of a standard base coat, this time using orc skin. Now you can paint your base in any color that you wish. I chose this scheme for the entire clan of adventurers that we've been painting up as part of this Game Master series. So I am gonna paint them all to match. So it looks like they are all adventuring together. Basing your miniatures in a cohesive way is one way to make your force, your dungeon party, whether it's an army or just a small squadron, really come together. Even if you're using different models like we are here, we've got a tieflin, we've got a warrior, a thief, a cleric, and an elf. But by basing them all in the same way, they do look like one cohesive group. Now that we have all of the colors basically based in, including the base, we're gonna go on to base coating all of the metallics. Now, I took a look at John Gallagher's artwork and I realized I made a little bit of a mistake. His bow is actually not a wooden bow, it's a metallic bow. So I'm gonna begin by just re-base coating it. Careful not to get any of the metallic paint on any of the skeleton bone that I previously painted around it. I'm just gonna apply mithril silver from the D&D Marvelous Miniatures line of paints in one thin coat, and if I need to go back, if some of this brown, this minotaur hide is still showing through, I'll just go ahead and apply a second thin coat. Some other areas on the miniature that you're gonna to wanna to focus on with this mithril silver is his belt buckle here. Just very carefully paint along the outside, and you know what, if you do paint a little bit like I did just there, paint too much on the inside there, you can go back and reapply some of your cobalt skin to it and fix it right up. This is the perfect time to fix those mistakes because we haven't applied a wash yet. I'm also going to apply this to some of the weapons on the model, like this part of his dagger sheath. He has a dagger sheath on both sides, so I'll do that on the other side. And of course, his sword. Now, we are gonna be applying a bronze paint to some other areas on the model, like the hilt of his sword. So I'm just gonna base in this mithril silver one time because metallic paints always adhere just a little bit better to having a metallic base coat. That's just gonna save us a bit of time in the next step. A lot of applied the mithril silver to all of the areas that I want metal, including the areas that I want gold, as you can see on this chest armor here. I'm gonna take dwarven bronze, and I'm gonna work this up in later stages in other tutorials to be a nice bright gold, but I'm gonna use dwarven bronze as our base coat here. So I applied the metallic base coat, the mithril silver in these areas, like I said, because sometimes metallic paints just like to adhere to each other a little bit simpler. So in many cases, you'll only need to apply one coat of your Dwarven Bronze. So very carefully, I'm just gonna pick out and base coat this bronze coat over top of the chest area here. And I think I'm gonna add some details. There's a little bit of detail on the bottom of the sword on the model. And you can see in John Gallagher's artwork, there's some gold and silver mixed in on Derek's bow. Now we don't have that detail on the model here, so I'm just gonna try to represent that by painting and adding a little bit of this gold effect to the tips of this bow here. Now I also wanna paint the hilt of the sword in this tone, leaving the sword silver, of course. Now, if you wanted to, if you wanted to give your ranger elf, elf ranger, wood elf ranger, a gold sword, you could, but I'm gonna leave this one silver and just apply some gold accents to it. And don't forget these shoulders, it's tiny, you can barely make it out, but there is some armor on the shoulders of our elf ranger. So I am just gonna apply that same application of dwarf bronze there. Now we've applied all of the base tones on the model, it's time to move on to the wash. And the wash step is great because it adds some very simple depth and shading to the model. I am using flesh wash from the Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments range. I'm just gonna apply this to all of the flesh and hair on the model. You just wanna apply this all over the model and as it begins to dry, you do want to see it focusing and settling in on the recesses for sure, but you don't want it to pull up too much. So after your first application, 
go back around the model and give it a look and just make sure it's not pulling up. You see too much here in the eyes. You just wanna spread it around with your brush. So we're gonna apply it to all of the face and of course the hands and arms on Derek. Next, we're going to apply brown wash to all of the remaining areas on the model. And this is a nice, rich brown wash. You wanna be careful not to get this on the skin tones, which we previously washed in flesh wash, but just cover up all of the green and brown and red areas on the model that we've previously painted in this brown wash. Careful that it doesn't pull up too, too, too much. You don't wanna have big globby pools in the recesses. I like to work in a downward motion with my brush strokes. As you can see, I'm applying it just under a ridge of the model and working its way down, helping gravity to feed its way and work its way into the recesses. We're gonna apply it all over the model, everywhere except for, of course, the face, arms, and hair. Save the base as well. We're gonna apply a different tone of wash to the base so that we match the rest of our Game Master characters. And you can see as I pull this brown wash across the outfit here of our elf ranger that it's really helping to establish and pick out the details. You can see the pigments working their way into the quilted pattern on his skirt here. The washing stage is a very simple stage and when done right can save you loads of time because, you know, at this point, this is the Adventure Ready tutorial. This is gonna be the tutorial that'll take your models to the point to where they're ready to be taken and fielded in your next dungeon adventure. In the future, we'll work on some more techniques to help bring your model life even more. And while the brown wash is drying, I'm just gonna apply some shadow wash, a nice rich black wash to the pavers on the base. I hope you enjoyed this adventure ready tutorial as much as I enjoyed painting up this elf ranger for you today. Remember that you can find all of the paints and products that we use today at your friendly local game store from your favorite online providers such as Amazon or at www.thearmypainter.com. Remember that the magic in miniature painting is that it can be as simple or as challenging as you'd like it to be. With the right techniques, you're sure to achieve some great results. We'll see you next time.